Breast augmentation has really become uh, the specialty of my practice. Um, just by sheer numbers, that is well over 90% of what I do in my practice now. I now do more breast augmentation procedures than probably 99% of uh, plastic surgeons in the country. And this is one of the things that I've touched on uh, before is that I think about things very differently uh, and assess my patients differently, give different recommendations. But it goes further than that. There's also a difference um, in technique. Handling the tissue very gently um, and with minimal blood loss helps the patients recover so much faster. Um, the average or typical blood loss for an entire breast augmentation procedure um, is about a half a teaspoon, so not much at all. And typically most of the bleeding is actually from the skin incision itself. Preventing that blood loss helps to um, both give the patients a faster recovery and a, it significantly decreases the chances for capsular contracture. My typical recovery from breast augmentation is that 80% uh, of my patients uh, will wind up taking pain pills uh, in addition to the ibuprofen that we uh, suggest. Um, the vast majority of those patients are done taking pain pills by day two or three. About 20% of my patients never take the pain medication uh, and they just simply follow three instructions that we give to all breast augmentation patients. And then there's also very good data that shows that the more blood that is around or in contact with the implant um, in breast augmentation surgeries, the greater the chance of capsular contracture uh, and other complications relating to uh, breast augmentation. Capsular contracture is probably uh, the complication that patients come in and ask about most frequently um, after breast augmentation. The surprising thing is, I don't really worry about capsular contracture that much in my practice. What really capsular contracture is, is that your body is going to form scar tissue around the implant after we put the implant in the tissue. Capsular contracture means that that scar tissue is going to form much more vigorously, tighter, and stiffer. And it's going to change both the look and the feel of the breast. What we really want to try to do is minimize that early capsular contracture. And this is once again the complication that patients come in and they've read on the internet, oh, I want to avoid capsular contracture. And in my practice, I think I've seen less than five early capsular contractures in my entire career because much of what contributes to capsular contracture has to do with the surgical technique that was used. Not everything can be blamed on surgical technique, so there are other factors, but I do everything that I can in the operating room to absolutely minimize uh, those risks for my patients. Probably the thing that I worry about the most with my patients for breast augmentation is something called bottoming out, which means once we put that implant in the tissue, it is the tissue here that has to hold and support the implant because there's muscle here and muscle here that is going to wall off that implant and prevent it from moving in those directions. But it's just the soft tissue, the connective tissue of the chest that, that helps support the implant here. If you look at um, women that undergo breast augmentation surgery, there's a significant number nationally that need to have reoperation within the first year. And a very significant portion of that has to do with implants bottoming out and sliding down through the tissue. This is another area of my practice where I've been rather innovative and um, I utilize uh, both uh, techniques in the operating room, patient assessment in their initial consultation, and some post-operative uh, instructions in order to help minimize that. And I found that I've been able to really reduce that, lay, uh, that level of uh, bottoming out in my uh, patients very significantly.